Okay, so we are at Utah Desert Remote Observatories again, and uh, I want to show you guys what's in there now after like a year and a half of uh, being here. So now it's completely full almost, and I want to show you all the different types of scopes and mounts, and I think it's very uh, interesting to take a look at all these different astro uh, products. So let's go in there and see uh, what we have. So here is the office, like you uh, saw last time, and in this, I mean, behind this door is going to be all the equipment. Let's go in. And today was very raining, so hopefully there's no more rain coming. I think we picked the wrong day to come here. And uh, we will take a look at everything here. So, the first one is ours, which is right here. Uh, SGX 130 with a 10 micron GM 1000. We're very happy to be having, I mean, to have a spot here at UDRO and image every single night. It's so, so cool. Um, then we have a CGX mount over here with a, uh, I believe a C11 H HD, which uh, looks really nice with a monochrome camera here. Now on the left, we have a big boy here. This is a Paramount, I believe it's what, M MX maybe? I don't know, not sure, um, but it's a big Paramount uh, mount. So hopefully I'm not wrong here, but it's a big, big, big uh, Takahashi Newtonian telescope, which looks amazing. Then here we have another Takahashi telescope. It is the FSQ-106 with uh, another Paramount mount. And look at this tripod slash pier, super fat. <laughs> Next, uh, let's go on this big one here. This is, what mount is this? I'm not sure. I'm not sure what, which mount this is, but uh, it's all black and looks, uh, looks pretty sturdy. But the telescope is a plane wave, I believe CDK20. So it's a huge uh, telescope and uh, very, very expensive stuff. It looks crazy. So let's be very careful navigating through here because you have to not much space, so be very careful. And these are not our telescopes. We want to be very, very considerate of our neighbors here. Yeah. So here we have another Paramount mount. This is another plane wave uh, telescope. And on top here, there is Dahlia's favorite telescope, which is a Red Cat. <laughs> I believe a Red Cat 51 as a guide scope. Uh, then right behind you, there is another Takahashi telescope. This seems to be an FSQ-106 and uh, this weird mount, which I have no idea what, this, what mount this is. Um, I have to ask Craig, the owner of uh, this observatory, which mount this is. And you can see here a, a 50D camera at the back with those big uh, vents holes here. And if you look right behind you, Dahlia, you will see a huge telescope right where I am. Another Paramount mount. So as you can see, the Paramount uh, software-based mounts are the most popular when it comes to the batteries. And this is a dream scope, a 16-inch. Um, Let's take a look on the side. Yeah, look actually compared to me, how big it is. See how massive it is. A 16-inch f3.75 telescope. And Craig told me it was uh, not easy to collimate, but they did it. So. Um, just Take huge. another look in the front look, here. So huge. So huge. We've uh, this got is outlets. A, that's a, a typical pier uh, area, like a spot. So if you decide to have your scope here, for example, you have your own spot like this, and you can either put a tripod or your pier, and you can plug in your stuff in this, uh, this box, which is cool. And here we have yet another software basic mount, uh, and this time with a RASA 11. Uh, attached to it, and an ASI 071 MC. Look at that! Hello! <laughs> so an F2 RASA 11. Now right behind you there is another FSQ 106, I believe, with an Ioptron CM70G mount, which those are very good mounts as well. And uh, the camera here seems to be the ASI uh, 6. Yeah, 6200, so it's a full frame camera, um, ASI. 
I love this. And you can see on this one too, it has that little flip flap thing to, oh yeah, this is a flip to flap close flap, uh, it. From Alintag. Uh, right now it's closed, which is really cool. And this is not the FSQ 106, it's a baby Q. It's the smallest uh, of the FSQ series. Now on your, on your left though, there is, a, I think, the biggest of the refractors from uh, Takahashi, which is the TOA 150. And once again, on a software basic mount. Let's say a uh, rip for my arms holding up the camera right now. Uh, comment and tell us if you feel bad for my arms. That's a job, you know. <laughs> so here there is the, F uh, the uh, Takahashi TOA 150, so big refractor telescope. Also very huge, for sure. With a QHY camera at the back here. And then we have three left. Uh, this one here is a, well, actually they're all plane waves. So we have three plane wave telescopes left. One is over here with a huge filter wheel. Look at that. And um, navigate around without touching. Yeah, you can see it even better as we move around the telescope. These humongous four, no, three counterweights here. And by the way, those telescopes are so huge and big that they, you have to have a crane to lift them and put them here, which is a lot of work. And uh, here, another plane wave telescope. I'm not entirely sure what size they are. It's kind of hard to tell the size when there's so many around you. Uh, I know the one over there was 20. This one behind you is 24. Crazy. Uh, I don't also want to say anything wrong. Also a huge filter wheel. Wow, wow, wow. And yeah, then maybe really nice. the most huge of all. Dun, dun, dun. That's a plane wave CDK24 on a L on a plane wave L650 mount, which is uh, just huge. And uh, currently it's missing the camera, but um, it's going to be uh, active soon. But look at, it's so huge. Could you imagine just having this at your disposal? It's huge, it's huge. I also, this, um, the way that it's mounted, you can see. Let me turn around this way. So the mount does not require any counterweight. It's not uh, like a typical Astro mount. This is, um, there's no gears in this mount, so it's, there's no uh, problem with backlash or anything. Gorgeous. And it's just uh, incredible. Of course, I believe this is the most expensive setup of the whole uh, building here, which is Take crazy. a picture for the thumbnail. Wait, don't get in front of the plane wave. Don't cover the plane wave. Perfect. But you're very dark. Cute. Okay, I think we did everything here. Now, Dahlia, follow me back. Snack your way around to go back to the office. Follow me. It's like a game. It's like, don't touch anything. <laughs> Be a cat. And by the way, today we are here because we're going to switch out our telescope uh, temporarily for our Galactic Core Season 4. So um, that's why we're here. Good job. And this is a, a last view of all the telescopes here. As you can see, it's very, very nice. So I hope you guys enjoyed this quick and easy tour of an observatory. This is once again Utah Desert Remote Observatories. And um, we have really good friends with the honor, Craig. And um, we, we love being, I mean, having a spot here at this place and it's really good. So. This was a quick tour. They are opening a second building, even bigger than this one. And uh, one day maybe we'll do a second tour of that one. Exciting. So, very exciting. So we'll see you guys next time and class guys.